Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and welcome to my channel. Today, for this week's video, I wanted to do a bit of an iPad tour and show you which apps I use most regularly as someone who's not only studying music, but also performing. These apps are ones that I use almost every day, almost every day I practice, and many of these apps were shown to me by my friends who have been using an iPad for a long time, or there are some that I just stumbled across when I was younger and have been using for many, many years. So I can't wait to show you some of these apps. So let's begin. So the first app I want to show you is called Fourscore, and it's basically a virtual binder for all of your music. The app has a few built-in categories that you can use to help categorize all of your scores, like composers, genres, tags, and labels. I kind of go through different phases of which category I use most, but lately I am using the labels feature a lot to put all of my scores into larger categories, such as chamber music, technique books, or just all of my box suites. And then I use a different feature, which is the set lists, to organize everything that I'm currently working on in one place, regardless of whether it's Bach or chamber music or anything like that. Fourscore also has a great annotating system, which you can use with or without an Apple Pencil, which is handy for when you forget your Apple Pencil. You can write things with the pencil, or you can write it with your finger. You can customize the color and size of your lines. So I have a few colors that I tend to use and I use them for different things such as highlighting different parts or emphasizing certain notes or writing down fingerings. I tend to write a lot of things in my music. So once I feel like my music is too messy, I just rescan my music and start fresh again. The only thing that I don't like about Fourscore is that there isn't a cloud that my music and annotations automatically get sent to. So every few months, I take the time to upload my scores into Google Drive so that in case my iPad gets stolen or if it malfunctions and breaks, I don't lose all of my music. This app also pairs really well with a Bluetooth pedal in which you can control the pages by pressing on it with your foot. And that way you can have your hands free to play and your feet can be useful. Some people get a bit anxious when performing with a pedal because they're afraid that, oh, not a pedal, your iPad, because they're afraid that your iPad might unexpectedly turn off mid-performance. So they choose to practice with an iPad, but to actually perform with paper or to memorize it. That's never been a problem for me. I've never had my iPad suddenly turn off, but you can choose what's best for you. Fourscore also has a built-in metronome drone feature. And then there's also a tuner, which I find a bit unreliable, but the drone and the metronome come in pretty handy. This leads me to my next apps, which are all some variation of a tuner, metronome, and drone that I bought in high school when I received a iTunes gift card, if you know what that is and I've been using these apps ever since. The first app I use is called Tuner, and um, you can use these plus and minus buttons to choose whether you want to do 441 or 440, um, and these pins tell you whether you're sharp or flat. When I was in high school, I really preferred using this app on the iPad rather than my phone because these ticks are much easier to see when they're blown up like this. You can totally use Tuner Lite, which is the free version of this app, but I accidentally bought the paid version in high school, so I've been sticking to this one. The only difference between the Tuner and the Tuner Lite is that you get a lot of backgrounds. Um, I like to change it up every few months because it genuinely gives me entertainment to have like a weird background. Currently, I have this military one so, great. The next app is called Tempo, and it's just a basic metronome app that I also purchased in high school. It has a lot of features like accenting beats, or it allows you to get really specific into your time signature. So as you can see, there's like five, eight, you can do three plus two, or two plus three, or seven, eight, two plus three plus two. 
all kinds of combinations that are helpful. But for metronoming purposes, I actually really prefer using a real metronome uh, rather than an app. This is the one I use. It is the KDM3. Oh, it's the Korg. And I bought this in white purely so that I can cover it in stickers and kind of make it more fun. It does the same thing that the app does. I just think a real metronome helps me more than the app. And the last metronome tuner app is TE Total Energy that I mainly use just for the drone feature. A lot of different teachers have different opinions on the use of drones, but I still find them useful. TE allows you to choose different instruments for what you want to sound like. And it also has this super entertaining happy face feature. Uh, where if you have the correct intonation for a long time, the smiley face gets bigger. My previous teacher preferred if we recorded ourselves playing a drone through the piano rather than an electronic instrument. So if you want a drone to play against, you can do that as well. Which is a pretty good segue into my next used app, which is Voice Memos, which is an app that automatically gets installed into your phone or iPad when you first purchase it. Here are some of my piano drones that I did last year in the Juilliard practice rooms. But aside from that, it's really helpful just to record yourself and get used to knowing what you sound like, not only from uh, under your ear, but from far away, because often it's very different. Let's see. habit to record yourself and listen and see what you can improve on or you can revisit them many years later and see how you've improved. So the next app is called Notability and you've probably heard of this app because it's very popular. You can use it for your regular class notes but since I don't have too many classes anymore um, I mainly use it for my lesson notes. It's easy to access and to insert photos, so I like to add pictures of the scores so I can have a more detailed so I can have more detailed viewing of what my teacher wants me to work on for that week. And last but not least is an app called Genius Scan which I don't use every time I practice, but it's very, very helpful. And basically, it's an app that you can use to scan your music. So with Genius Score, you can get a PDF scan of your music um, that you physically take, so you can put it into your iPad. And you can export it into a number of things. You could do it into books, which is something um, one of my friends does, or you could go right into Fourscore, but that way, if you use, oh, I'm sure you could do it into Google Drive as well. Yeah, into Drive or OneDrive. And you can access your scores that way if you don't want to pay for the Fourscore app, which is totally valid. Anyways, as you can see, it's 1.17 a.m. And um, I should probably wrap up this video. But it's something that I've been wanting to show you guys for a while, so I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know if this was useful to you, if there are any apps that you wish to share with others or with me. I would love to hear it, and until then, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week.